So it's finally time to do this repair. I've been dreading it all day long because today it was 38 Celsius. It's apparently still 36, but what can I do? It's getting late. I'm running out of time. So today and in this video, I have to change the low pressure fuel pump on the F10 because I do have still some problems. I went over in another video, but first, why have I been dreading this repair? Not because it's such a bad job to do. Actually, for once, I don't have to check up the car, which is nice because it takes forever and it's just, well, don't like to crawl under the car. But the problem is it's hard as hell and I'm gonna be sweating like a pig. There are also tons of mosquitoes here and I hate them. That's not fun. And on top of that, you take the, you open the gas tank and you'll be sniffing all the fumes. That'll make you dizzy. That's just all not very fun. Anyway, you gotta be done. Here we have the parts for this. Third part. Um, fuel pump. I went with an aftermarket pump. And this is literally just the pump itself. Not with Kate, not with regulator, it's just the pump itself. Um, I got the idea from this. From Grant, he did the same, literally the same conversion. Supposedly stage two pump. Um, I'll put a link in the description. And it's an Oli, I'm gonna leave it in here. This is just the assembly kit that comes with it. Just your plug, you have to make some um, specific connectors for that. Um, clamps and a hose. Comes also with this filter. I will leave the old one in, this is on the cage. And this is the tool to remove the clamp on the fuel tank on the top, just to remove the, the, the clamp wing that keeps it all closed up. We'll get to that. Most people I saw don't use it. They use a hammer and dingle around for like five minutes or something like this, both ways. I tried it before, I don't like it. It served me, this was what? It was 20 bucks or so. Um, spent well to, instead of dingling 10 minutes, just like unscrew it and close it again. Worth it to me. So first, of course, the seat has to come out. You just grab down here and where the carpet starts. You have an edge, you grab and you give it a pull. One, same on the other side. Now it's, un it's loosened and you can wiggle it out carefully. That is it. Let me take it out, clean up a little bit, more or less, and then we continue. So I don't have a vacuum cleaner handy right now, so we live with this. Now I just gotta get down here. So first carpet has to make space. Just lift it up and you can, you can fold it. You can also just undo this here, but you just have to get down here and lift up this mat. I'm gonna get something somewhat heavy to hold it in place here, so I can work on here. And you see, it's only one side has a, a lid, a little head, other side doesn't, all the models have both. Once I have this aside, I just take a 10 millimeter, open these five nuts here, and open the lid, and then we can already see the tank. So the wifey's weight should do here. I'll just open these up. Here we are, and here we have the tank. Just gonna open the lines, remove the connectors, and this is the wing that you see that people just kind of dangle loose. I'm gonna use the special tool, see how that goes. So you can see it's three connectors, and they're all three different. This one here, you just pull the head, and then up, out, number one. Because they're all different, so you can't mess them up. Right? You go down here, just push on this tongue. Off this goes, and this one here, just squeeze on both sides and up. This other the way. I'm gonna move my lid down here, that doesn't bother me. This one, I'm just gonna tuck it under. Never mind, I'm just gonna drop it here. I also remove the, the seal so I don't soak it. The fuel in case I have a little more lure because this you want to keep dry. And we have this here, and just leave it and tuck it somewhere out of the way. On the fuel line, I will first start the car to empty everything from here. Now the pump doesn't work, 
I don't have as much mess in here. Too bad I didn't film it, kind of funny. You just started up the car there, just like after a couple of seconds dies and boop, 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 boop. So now, first we put blue paper in here, then I'm gonna open this one. So now that you can see, there's a little wing down here. It's a lock wing, just go in, screwdriver, and unlock it. And now, you can simply put it up. It's gonna be there's gonna be a little fuel in there. Like just a couple drops. It's fine, let it drop out. And then we're good here. Now everything is disconnected. Next step is use the fancy special tool and open the ring. So we can literally go inside the tank. And I'm just gonna like tug it somewhere onto the side here. For now. I'll just get my tool and we go on. So the hose will be a little bit in the way. That's what you have to live with. The tool just tests these address and they just slide in one side over there and then over here now it's in place. Boah! Holy moly! But better than dingling around. doing it's also marked you get a white spot again if you want to so up until here it was all easy but now the real fun part begins so there will be a connector somewhere that needs to be removed the regulator is somewhere tucked i think under the towards the driver's side under here it has to come out and there are just some wires some lines swimmer and then you have the bottom head all the way to the bottom it's connected everything has to come out not fun. Make sure you have some good ventilation, otherwise you're gonna faint. Not fun, but it's loose. Now the show begins. First thing you see, this cable is holding it back. Let's free it. Oh wow. Seems to order at first, but it's just superficial. Contacts are fine. So next, we have okay, we have these few lines here, here, and here. They come off, and this is going to the regulator here under there. Let's see if I can first I can take these out, make space. And then I'm gonna take the regulator out. These ones have little square buttons on both sides. You just squeeze them and then it should come out just like so. Put them aside, it's not in the way. Just if you can, it will be in the way. But anyway, and lastly, this here is the pump. It's mounted on the inner cage. We have an outer cage that holds it, of course. And the regulator sits down here. So it basically just follow the hose. You just push on the hose so you can reach it. That will take it out. Come here, come here little guy. The longer you take here, the more fuel you're gonna sniff. The more funny it's gonna be. That's the regulator. Getting things out is one thing, getting them back in is another thing. Anyway, now everything is loose. Now you see these clamps, these things here, all right? Push these out. And there is one more here and one in the back. You push these out and wiggle the inner wing out and the entire pump assembly comes out. Push everything that's in the way aside. Side and under. So and there it is, that's the fuel pump assembly, like I said, upper head, the lower head, the filter and pump and the regulator. If you buy this entire assembly OEM, just change it, now you drop it back in, just reverse it. It's not that complicated, you need a little bit of patience, but overall it's not a big deal. Like I said, I'm going with the Grand Johnson mount here and change the pump. Pump is here, silver block, meaning remove the connector and the hose 
and then install a new pump after I remove this one of course and put a new hose in there but we have to like um, change the cable also here we're doing a little bit cable DIY here but so be it so let's first get the pump out for that I will remove these clamps down here that you see to remove the filter and then the pump should already come out so before we start just want to show you a little bit we have the connector here and there seems to be like a separate ground also for the regulator you see and the new pump of course has a different um, connector it comes with a now all fueled on pouch and of course go something like this in here and we have of course here a plus or minus but you still have to get your cables on here so I have to cut it somewhere and you will see obviously I have a lot more cable in here than before shouldn't be a problem as long as it's sealed just wanted to make a note of this okay <laughs> Okay, fine. So the entire pump wants to come out. Just have to take off this hose pipe here. There we go. Connect this off. So I just use a little sharp knife to make a cut in here. Just spread it open and then remove the rest elsewhere. Off it goes and now again we undo the clips down here and remove the pump including filter and put it all out this we still need and this we take apart now so we reuse the filter because it has to go back into the cage so i don't see anything specific holding this i'm just going to give it a pull it's already hanging on the inlet but you also want to pay some more attention as to how it was oriented because once you don't have this as guidance anymore how it was in here you start from zero so it was somewhat across Easier said than done, I guess. But literally, there shouldn't be anything holding this back. There we go. Our dirty old filter and our old pump. Which I'm sure it still works, but there may have maybe some problems. So now we go straight into it, clipping the new one in. Just the same way. Just push this nose into this wing. And that is all. It's in. Also, a rubber hose and clamps. Make sure to use these clamps, or it may not hold and come off, as it happened before to people. Just a little test to see that it also fits like this it's installed again and now we just have to hook up the hose and then of course our nice wires don't over tighten it either your clamp will give in or in worst case you break the little nibble on the pump you don't want that I'll just bend this thing down, put it on here. So pump is in, hose is back on, stable. The wiring is a little bit, if to work that out. Just gonna put some cable binder on here. So everything is back together, at least on the pump side here. These connectors are the worst shrink I've ever seen. They don't shrink at all. Um, but since you have other open connectors in here, like down there, um, it should be fine. But that is definitely an area of improvement. T is all a little tight, be careful with this one. We have to move it a little bit back. So managing your cable is always tricky. 
but from here on it goes right back in this is the rear end then it clips in place these go back on then you put your regulator back in place snap it in down there don't help by much and last it ahead now the time has come let's put it back in things in And just push it carefully gently down and that is it pump replaced and now you can either dangle it back in or you do the gentleman method and just use a special tool. Can you see that? Yeah. That's the easy twist. It is hella, hella hard to admit that. You do literally convince this shit on here. And you see I'm not all the way at the mark. So you have to push a little more. <laughs> it has to like slip over this notch and they don't really need a mark so you can see they lift these notches here and this hump just has to go over into the middle one and then it's locked and secured in place <laughs> holy cow okay Honestly, it's still better than dangling my ass off. So, tank is closed, push this thing on. And now it's as simple as just putting your cable back in, your seal around, the lid on, the last two connectors on, and your rear seat back on. That's it. And then you want to prime it a couple times before you start it, meaning you just uh, turn on the ignition. Like 10 seconds, turn it off. And then do it again like three four times and then you start it to fill up the line again that you drained and make sure um, your rail doesn't want dry there's a little arrow indicating the direction of travel keep it open to check for leaks and also in case there's a problem i can still take it out again so let's prime the car like i mentioned priming the car Nothing fancy, just turn on the ignition. And now the pump would be wiring. I'll have to wire back my seat to make space. So we prime it a little bit more. Okay, let's apply. So that's the pop in my head before. And the car will shut off. So we prime a little more and then we start it up. So it triggers me the warning, but I'm gonna start it up now anyway. that the car didn't burn me means clearly the pump is working fuel is arriving at the engine i'm gonna check for leaks I'll just do that briefly so the only places it could leak would be here just nothing or the green seal that's underneath here but right now there's just not enough gas in the tank for that so we just close up the nice lid screw down these five little screws flip over the mat which is just a sound insulation and dampening mat and then put the seat back on, pretty much it. A word of advice, if you have to make a repair in the tank, just get a stupid tool, it's really worth it. It's worth 20 bucks, better than dangling your ass off in the heat like me or maybe in the cold, just get it. 
it's hard enough the way it is already it's easy um also make sure your tank is as empty as you can because not sure if it picked up on the video but you would have to fiddle around in there it's just nasty so empty the tank the last time i had this problem that the car died on me was after pushing it a little bit harder and then parking it shortly after just for like a couple of minutes to get a drink or something and then it would die right in the parking lot so i'm going to test and see how it is now but for now thanks for watching Hopefully, you don't have to make an update on this video because I'm stranded again. But I see you for sure in another video.